What's up, guys? We're back here. Tasteless and Artosis bringing you the Star League Season 2. So far, we've had some very interesting results. We have Tasteless. First, of course, taking out Roro. That's uh, probably a surprise to a lot of people. His first yeah. is really overshadowed by so many Protosses. Uh, and Roro is one of the best In a servers. really cool base trade game, too. Yeah, it was a fun one. I really enjoyed that game. Definitely recommend that one to your friends. Leenok versus Hiva, pretty straightforward. Pretty Baneling, standard. Tenpole Baneling didn't work. Leenok killed him. I think people probably need to stop doing the Tenpole Baneling. I think you're right, Artosis. I think it, it just... I remember when it first was really coming into popularity. Like, it would just kill you. Like, you'd get two spines, you'd still lose. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's doing very uh, poorly now. Anyways, next match, Lee Nock versus First. Really nice match. I think First might win. I think he but might. But I think this is one of the harder ones to call in this group, to be honest. Yeah, well, you never know. You Lee know. Nock can kill anybody at any time. Like, yeah. Lee Nock can take games off Innovation, Soul Key, Flash, no, yeah. anybody. Anybody. But also, he can lose randomly. You know? Yeah. That's just kind of the, the nature of him. Uh, but definitely... Uh, a player that has been so solid, been here since the very beginning. Oh, yeah, he's old school now. Yeah, and he's young as he can be, too. Bet, yeah, th I mean, this guy's probably going to be around and probably be a top player, even in Legacy of the Void. Oh, no, he's... I he, mean, this guy is... Well, I remember we were talking about him back in, like, Season 1, and we were actually yeah. like, guys, watch this kid. He will be a god one day. Yeah. And he's basically there. The kid has won so many tournaments at this point. He's one oh, of the yeah. biggest money earners ever. Oh, absolutely. And, of course, here's his opponent first. The map is now loaded up. So get ready for some more awesome StarCraft 2 action here at GoldenTV.net. In the bottom right, we have our deadly young Zerg player. His ID is... Master FXO Lino. And the only Protoss player in this group, will he be the first to advance? He is... New Challenger. LGIM first. Right. Alrighty. So, I, you know, the map, uh, Newkirk Development Precinct, or Redevelopment, Redevelopment Precinct. Redevelopment Precinct. Now, this map used to be called Newkirk Precinct or Newkirk City. I can't remember. Newkirk Precinct. Okay. That's what it was. And now it's Redevelopment. And I actually have to say I appreciate whoever decided to name it that because every map eventually gets tuned. If it's good enough, to be in the pro leagues, eventually you're like, okay, these are the things we need to change to make this map actually good. Yeah. Because this map before sucked. It was it was not a good map. A lot of things wrong with it. But now it's like a very good map. And normally what happens is they then add something like TE for tournament edition or LE ladder edition or yeah. Neo at the front or Shin at the front or New at the front. Yeah. Instead, they're like, well, this is a precinct. It's being redeveloped. Redevelopment Precinct. There you go. So you know what? That's clever. Cheers to whoever chose to do that <laughs> instead of the same old Neo Newkirk Precinct. Yeah. Garbage. Well, you know, it's, it's funny you uh, bring that up. A lot of people don't know that, that we have maps that are constantly being yeah. adjusted and modified. Very we don't just take a map or uh, take a set of maps and go, well, that's what we're stuck with. Huh. We actually, uh, here at GOM, actually eliminate several maps. Yeah. That once we decide, okay, this map isn't fair anymore. Yeah, we should even have this map in the pool. You know, or, or and this, that's happened a lot of times. Yeah, or, or we're looking at this map. We say this map needs a watchtower, or it doesn't need a watchtower. We're yeah, like it. that's Aklon. Aklon, yeah. when it was first released, had four watchtowers, not two. And yeah. then we had the two in the middle blow up after seven minutes, and that was still too powerful. So <laughs> we got rid of those too. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's you know that's a lot of people ask me about this, but you know, in StarCraft One, we got the game balanced. And yeah. then all that changed were maps. Yeah. And the what? way that the maps were. And you could actually, like, there was something called the Legend of the Fall. Every fall, a Protoss would win the big league, like the GSL Code S of StarCraft 1. Yeah. And that's because they balanced the maps towards Protoss in that season. And all it took was a little bit of tweaking and get a Protoss champion. Yeah. That's Absolutely how true. That's how well balanced is. And StarCraft 2 will eventually get there after Legacy of the Void's out for a while. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting, especially for people like you and me, because we've been here since the beginning. Mm hmm. Um, I remember back when we were playing on uh, tournaments, the only map that people played on was Lost Temple. Yeah. And this map that was awful called Hunters. Yeah. Oh, God. I remember when I started getting people to finally play me on, like, Rivalry Sum and stuff, which was yeah. terrible, by the way. That's, that map sucks, <laughs> too, actually. But it was something new, you know? Yeah. Totally. Well. So far, uh, pretty greedy builds by both players here. Uh, the one thing to mention is, well, I guess actually Lenox isn't that greedy. 
uh, against the Forge Expand. He has taken his third, but he actually has been mining gas, which you don't normally see this early. It's fine to do. You can do it. Yeah. But it's just something to throw out there is he is getting that very quick zerging speed. There's another wolf head down there. Oh, wow, look at that. That's that's not a wolf head. That's a doghouse, and a giant wolf is just looking outside. <laughs> He's laying in his little igloo house. That's a space wolf. <laughs> is there any other type? I don't know. Earth wolves, I guess? Earth wolves. Yeah, man. <laughs> Those are the ones we have here on Earth. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, I can't think of the word. What? There's a theory that life on Earth was uh, seeded by, like, asteroid Life. hits from Oh, I've, I've heard something. about that, too. Yeah. yeah. They're like if a comet I had or a something. good joke if I could have remembered the name of that. <laughs> Pans... Pan... Oh, God, I can't... I just barely... That's, it'll, that's it'll like, come. the type of stuff I, like, read about on the Internet, so, you know? Well, that stuff's always so interesting to read about. Looks is like it? this probe has been spotted here, so... Can't proxy a pylon or anything like that just yet. And he is going to go and go with the Stargate build. We'll see if he might pull Phoenix into the last game. He might hmm. not. We don't know. Yeah. And, in fact, he doesn't even have to go Phoenixes. He could go Void Rays and go into Sky Toss. That's yeah. definitely a possibility. Uh, in fact, some people have recently been mixing in from time to time a single Void Ray yeah. to make it seem like it's Sky Toss and then just go for some Phoenixes. So. Yeah, that's actually true as well. Because, um, you know, if someone goes well, Sky Toss, you get in your brain what you're going to do very quickly. <laughs> well, yeah, and then what you can do is you can get the Zerg to overreact and overcompensate. Mm-hmm. For something that doesn't really matter, you know? Yeah. Something now, that's not even really headed their way. Now, okay, he's sending out the first Phoenix instead of waiting for any. And he's gotten the Robo right after the first Phoenix started. And he actually started plus one, then canceled. So I think he's actually going to go for the double Immortal, double Colossus all in. Yeah, uh, I think you're with right. Phoenixes. Throw up a bunch more gates and just push out. Yeah, it's an unbelievably powerful build, and it's also tricky because... You oftentimes go Phoenixes into Robo to take a third, and in fact, you yeah. oftentimes take a fake third with this this build. But it looks to me like it's that build. It doesn't uh, have to with, be. With builds oh. like... What's up? A War Prism. Oh, and he's, wow. He's actually already got three centuries. Oh, my God. He's going to clear the path. Oh, my. This is so cool. He's going to clear the oh. path and what, go to the ramp force yeah. field it, and yeah. then just warp an army. This is really exciting. Oh. Oh, I cannot Nerd wait. Chills. I haven't seen this strat exactly done like this, no. but you know what? It makes perfect sense. It Why does. not? I feel yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Why not? This is cool, man. Oh my god. He actually he has it timed perfectly. The four centuries are out. He's yep. look at the Phoenix movements. In fact, the fact that there are no Phoenixes killing drones right now should be a little bit of a tell to Lenoch. Yeah, it should be a little alarming right now. Yeah. Now, he's going to have five gates warping in Zealots. There yeah. are there are Hydras on the way, but not enough. As soon as he gets a, his first warping up, he's going to have enough units with the Phoenixes to stop everything, I think. He's going, he should yeah. be able to kill the main. Now, he has to draw the Hydras. Good. Draw the Hydras down. Very good moves. And then here we unload go. unload right over here. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Everything's just Brutal. out of vision, too. Brutal. All right, he's going to see the sentry. Force fielded. Okay, well, this is... Very good for him, and look at that. That is enough zealous to keep these sentries alive, which is exactly what he needs to do. Now, Lenok's going to run around a lot. He, oh, he's going to go for those sentries again. I don't think that's going to work out, but yeah. I, I guess what options does he truly have at the he moment? He doesn't really have much. No. I mean, he just needs to get another force field over there by the ramp. It's getting close to Nedley. Yeah, he'll get it just in time. Yep. Perfect. Oh, my God. This is so well executed. This is so well. I'm so, so impressed with first. All right. He's just, he can just keep making force fields, guys. Yeah. He has enough force fields to last for the entire Basically the rest of the game. Yeah, like that he will never run out if he doesn't yeah. want to. And if he makes, makes a mistake and then puts the, down a second force field or something, he just warps in more sentries. Yeah. No this problem is there. absolutely awesome. You say, yeah. Look at this. His timing is perfect on getting these out. He's getting yes. the force field literally at the last oh. second. That one was just a, a tiny little bit, bit too late, late, but that's okay. Yeah. Because he's gonna go and get this hatchery now. Over here now, in Maine. This was really well executed. Wow. Wow, first. Yeah, this is really impressive. I'm stuff. actually, you know what? I'll talk about it after, but I have some happy things to say. Um, but look at this. The Phoenix is now coming in, helping out a little bit. Actually, messing up on his micro slightly there and being yep. targeted down. Good job by Lenok there, getting the best he could with those Hydras. But uh, I don't know why we haven't seen this strat before. Well, the, you you know know the Warp Prism buff is pretty new, and 
To be fair, I haven't watched a lot of Pro League in the last week, so this could have yeah. happened like maybe once. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, you know, I think that this just kind of came back. And the thing is, this map is the perfect map for it. Oh, it's yeah. all dead space in between. Yeah. So you can actually clear 100% of scouting of this. Like, they, they just completely can't... catch them off guard. Yeah. I mean, there's really not much Lee Knock could do. Lee Knock got blindsided by this. Yeah. Wow. And I think this push over here now with these um, yeah. immortals of the sentries and the zealots and now some stalkers well, in the back. What are you going to do against this? Phoenix is look like they're going to fall. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, he's hitting, and the thing is, he's going Colossus behind us. This is like not even all in what we're watching here. No, which is this is kind of actually funny. a brilliant strategy. Yeah. Well, it's kind of all in, but it's not all the way all in. No, it's what's well, not as dramatically all in as like, for instance, we saw Hyva do in that yeah, last exactly. game. You know? Exactly. GG, that's it. Wow. Sick play. That was an awesome game. Really, what a treat to cast really something nice. like that. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, that was that was that was a treat. Perfect strategy for the map. Uh, you know, with the new patch on the Warp Prism, that makes that just even more efficient. Um, the way he lured the Hydras down, I'm actually getting chills describing it again. Uh, really well, awesome, so awesome You can game. see Leedock, there was really nothing he could have done. No, he got he got outplayed there. Totally it, outplayed. Like, out-strategized, out-micro. Well, there wasn't a lot of micro he could do. Once the forest field went down, yeah. the Hydras were on the bottom. There wasn't much he could do. And what's nice about it is, is not just that, but he also knew... Uh, when to pull out. Huh. He's like, okay, we've done the damage. I don't have to keep trying to do this and warp in stuff here. Yeah. I've killed the main. Uh, I did a lot of damage. A lot of your drones weren't mining. So yeah. he just and picks up the and leaves. Is, if his hydras are in the main, uh, then he can stop and stuff. Anyways, let's go ahead to the interview, and yeah. we can talk more about this after. First, uh, you can already tell just kind of in his voice that he's kind of in awe, but he's like, you know, my first time here for Star League, I didn't expect to go up 2-0, and it kind of felt oddly easy, but I feel really good about it. Certainly made it look easy. Yeah. <laughs> he played well, no doubt. has always kind of thought that Zerg was his worst matchup and also he says it's mainly because during practice he's very aggressive but when he comes uh, on broadcast or on, goes on stage he has trouble kind of bringing that style out and so especially against Zerg but today his builds uh, worked out well for him and first, as in uh, his first game today, uh, he felt he went a little bit too far, a little bit over aggressive. But once he started seeing the mutas, uh, you know, there was only one choice left, and he just went with that and played the game out. Yeah, first says he thinks the biggest thing for him to improve is to adapt to being on stage and also being on air, you know, having the cameras in your face, things like that. The whole environment of playing at such a tournament. Um, and if he can get used to that, he believes he'll be able to bring up his style. <laughs> First says, uh, interesting enough, he says he tends to get less nervous when he goes to international tournaments, and he thinks it's mainly because he can't tell the fans, like how much attention the fans are giving. I mean, because there's like the language barrier and things like that. Like unless they're chanting your name or such, you know, such occasions, uh, he can't tell, you know, what they're saying or how they're looking at you. He can't read their facial expressions as well. It's really matches up with this results until now. And first, uh, pretty confident about Terran's actually, even when he's on air or on stage, uh, he feels pretty good about Terran matches, but specifically Zerg, he has the most trouble with when he's put on the spot. I wouldn't have known. 
Yep. Well, he came into it with a 50% record, so... Of course, when you're talking about Terran, you can't forget that already we have players like Flash and uh, Innovation moving on. And uh, first says, you know, at this point, if he plays the way he is, he's pretty confident to go up against any Terran, and he thinks it'll be a good match. So maybe, never know. A bold statement, brave and bold. I like the ladybugs on Castle Jin's jacket. He's rocking. It's summertime here in Seoul. Gold chain and everything. <laughs> First is like, to be honest, it would be nice if not many other Protosses moved on so that he could kind of get the spotlight for you know one of the few Protoss players, but at the same time he feels for his fellow race players and hopes that they all play well and move on to the round of 16. No tears were shed for SOS, I guess not. <laughs> Uh, first, when, you know, originally entering, he said the round of eight or the quarterfinals was his original goal for this tournament, and now that he's gotten one step closer, and everyone was expecting him to say his goal has also moved on to the round of four, but he's like, I'm just hoping I can make it to the round of eight. Uh, he, and he says the main reason is he wants to make sure he can achieve whatever goal he set for himself and then actually just be comfortable with where he is and maybe play out the rest instead of getting too ambitious or greedy. Solid plan. And to his fans, uh, apologies for not showing the best performances when on air, but this season, he hopes to change that. Of course, as every player wants to show their best games here at WCS. Well, he's certainly gotten a good start. And he hopes that people pay him a little bit more attention from now on. And that's it for first. Once again, Cherbo giving it back to Dylan Monty. Very nice. I too like the ladybugs on his jacket. Very, very I didn't notice they were ladybugs no, at I didn't first. Either. But then when he pointed it out, I'm like, "Oh, those are ladybugs, aren't they?" Yeah. So, uh, we are going to be going into game number four here yeah. for this group, Group F, That's in right. just a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be a ZDZ Roro versus Hiva. The losers out, and I think it's going to be Hiva. I do want to say something about the two Protoss players that we actually have moving forward so far: Trap and First. Uh, one defining characteristic that we're seeing from these guys is extremely sharp builds with crisp execution. That's very true. Uh, and that's actually something that right now in the world of Protoss, you really, truly need to win. Yeah. Uh, whereas some of these other players, like, I don't know how to ex describe exactly my feelings on SOS's play. I love it. He's one of my favorite Protosses in the world for sure. But it's not exactly the same right it's it's pretty sharp and it's pretty crisp but it's not like these builds where i'm like i look it down to the second and i know the second trap is supposed to move out and he moves out and then i look at the build that uh first is doing and as the fourth century comes out the warp prison pops out he's cleared everything like there's something to be said about that it's really yeah. nice to see i gotta i gotta echo what that uh, what you just said there yeah absolutely it looks like actually our game is about to start here we're going right into this one. Hyba, the underdog, is going up against a GSL CODES champion, Roro. The map, again, will be New Kirk Precinct. I'm Tasteless with me as Zertosis, and this is the Star League Season 2 at GOMTV.net. This match in group out. 